It appears we're going to be facing Harwood Fell in this initial battle here, and this is not with any reinforcements from Dragonstone either. We might be in a bit of trouble here. Welcome back to a Clash of Kings 7.1 Reformers, and, well, this is a, uh, a pretty... I don't even know. I think, I think we should do okay. I actually allowed myself to get caught by this guy. I know that doesn't sound very plausible because it's me, but uh, it's true. It's true. I actually thought to myself, yes, maybe we'll be able to defeat this fellow. You know, I, I think we might have a pretty decent shot because I do have a pretty sizable number of, well, kind of regular-ish units. Some of them are veterans, but uh, most of my levies have advanced from the previous battles that we've done so far. And well, I think that's pretty good. I think that is pretty good. And hopefully we will be able to maybe eliminate and single out a couple of their cavalry. And then we'll see what happens from there. Now, I have scouted out a couple of the enemy's castles. And let me just say, it's looking unlikely that I will be able to take any of them. Because they have about 150 each in the garrison. And it really depends. I, I feel like we should have a pretty... I, I don't know. I think we would be able to do this. I think we would be able to take a couple of things from them. But it's just very, very risky. You know, it's one of those things where you really want to do it. But then when it comes down to it, you just get into like this kind of situation where you're thinking to yourself, okay, so if I do take this, then I'm going to have... Well, let's just say we lose a uh, an approximate number here. So I'm just going to give an example. An approximate number of, let's say, we lose 30, and I have 80. So I have 50 remaining after that. And then I think to myself, okay, so how am I going to defend against, well, let's just say, a regular vassal with about 120 units? How am I going to defend with 50 against that? And I don't have very high-tier units. And, I mean, you've seen that. Most of my guys are running around and they're not very well armored, as we would expect from Dragonstone. And it's, you know, it's one of those things. So it's, it's kind of something that we're going to have to maybe put on the back burner for the moment, because I will need to instead do a little bit of leveling up and just in general making myself much more powerful in the meantime. And I'm actually thinking of getting off my horse right here of getting off my horse and doing a little bit of damage from behind and maybe we can do something with that because these guys are wow that they're, they're actually they're actually pretty well armored look at this i'm actually attacking with overheads and i'm only doing 44 damage i guess it's because i am using this two-handed which is not exactly great at uh, my proficiency level so that is definitely something we're gonna have to work on as we've seen in other series two-handed can be extremely effective but it obviously very much depends on your proficiency and I am losing a couple of people here as well, but I am hopeful that I will be able to take him prisoner maybe, and then we'll see what happens after that. Now, my main goal going forward as a vassal of Dragonstone is to complete the Crowned Stag quest. And that was kind of the reason also why I decided to become a vassal with Dragonstone, because I kind of thought that quest seemed really interesting. And it has to do with Renly, and it has to do with trying to capture him, and so on and so forth. And there's a lot of jiggery-pokery to do with that quest. And I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to pull it off. Because it's a bit, uh, a bit weird, basically. Because on the one hand, it tells you to capture Renly, so that, uh, you know, Stannis can do something to him. And uh, on the other hand, it says to... It basically prevents you from capturing him on the fields of battle and instead you have to uh, according to a comment actually uh, it says it says you have to uh, basically make it so that you have to rescue him from an opposing party somewhere and then capture him from there so I'm not entirely sure why that would be the case I think that's I, I'm, I'm is that a bug I, I don't know whether that would be a bug but it sounds like a bug to me but maybe it's just to make the quest a little bit artificially more difficult and uh, I'm not a big fan of those kinds of things making things more difficult artificially is I, I guess fine but it's not really uh, not, I'm not really a big fan of that but that's just you know that's just me I mean I'm not the creator of any mod so <laughs> I am not going to even comment on that anyway we are hopefully 
done with these guys. I'm actually kind of surprised that the enemy is not moving faster because as you can see we've absolutely slaughtered all of them we did lose quite a few units as you can see right there we lost about nine to the grim reaper but 12 were wounded so i suppose that's okay and hello that is lord harwood himself and ah yes i forgot about that clash of kings does tend to have that uh that uh, that particular mechanic where if you eliminate an enemy lord yourself you're going to lose relation with him and i mean obviously that, that that's kind of to be expected isn't it but that is really kind of bad for us because if i'm going to create my own faction in the future or if i'm going to defect and join the targaryens or you know join whoever and uh, maybe even create my own faction at some point in the future then it is going to be kind of bad for me to have a lot of people hating my guts because then they will be unable to join me uh, or not unable, but they'll probably be much less likely to join us as a result. So that's definitely something that we should take into account there. But yeah, anyway, the point is, is that I, you know what? If the Targaryens were actually in the uh, in the game from the beginning, I probably would have joined them because I actually find it really fun to to play with Aegon and and all the rest because they're they're actually really really cool in my opinion because in my previous series of a clash of kings I did join the Targaryens and I had a huge amount of fun because well Aegon was kind of a bit of a well a bit of a dummy uh you know, let's just say that he was a bit of a dummy and he generally wasn't the smartest cookie in the jar and uh, it was kind of amusing just to try and rescue him as many times as I needed to. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to actually take this guy prisoner. Am I? Am I going to take him prisoner? I think I am actually going to take him prisoner. It is going to make the Reach hate us. But as a couple of people have mentioned in the comments, the Reach is probably going to be declaring war against us in the future anyway. So it's not really going to be too big a deal. All right, so there you go. I do have three vassals actually three vassals in my prisoner's hold i'm actually really surprised about that and now uh this is where things get expensive i'm not going to have enough money to level all of these up am i yeah i'm gonna level up these guys to elites first and then we will level up a couple of others oh yeah that is wow that that is so costly right there wow yeah it's very very expensive to level up in a clash of kings and that that brings me to the next point i'm gonna need to make some monies yes i'm gonna need to make some monies oh 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 hello hello there oh yes now that is utterly fantastic give me that give me that right now that is going to make us oh my we have another one what i'm kind of surprised i'm actually really surprised maybe i should take this lance as well maybe i should actually use that lance we have another one in my inventory right here but i didn't use it so i don't know but anyway, that is amazing. So we gained 470 coins from that as well. So that's pretty good. And we are right next to Fellwood right here. So technically, I could go in, as I've said, and I could attack this. But they have, I mean, look at this. They have veteran longbowmen. They have, I mean, a total of like an insane amount. They've got 100 longbowmen right there. And that is going to be almost, I would say, probably impossible for us to take. And I'm actually going to go into Tumbleton. I think this is actually a castle in a clash of kings so i will be unable to sell there but i would like to be able to do that just in a second all right so what's this the seasons pass and the day has come again it's the warrior's day on this day knights across the seven kingdoms spend the day in prayer lighting candles at the warrior's feet and fasting later tourneys are held across the realm with young squires jousting to win a knighthood of their own you decide to well uh i can't really donate <laughs> i mean you've seen my uh my uh, inventory right there it's not very good so spend an hour in prayer i guess oh there we go you feel a serene calm come over you oh well that's very nice indeed after slaughtering a whole bunch of people that's great oh this is actually a town fantastic okay great because i know that uh, some some towns or some some places that you would think might be towns are not actually towns anyway i am actually going to be using this kite shield instead because it actually gives me 12 resistance which is a little bit better than what i have but the size might prove a bit difficult to deal with there so i'm actually just going to sell my things here and actually you know what i'm going to keep this and i think i might keep that as well and we're just going to go and talk to our companions in just a second because i think it might be kind of 
worth it. Oh, oh no, these guys are leveling up. I mean, here's the thing. Generally, I'd be like, yes, our guys are leveling up. Great, you know, fantastic. But as it stands right now, I am not a big fan of them leveling up because we are in a situation where it is kind of difficult to do that because they are so expensive. Let's give Fena this shield. I actually really like Fena. She has been one of my companions in a previous series and she was an absolute beast. So I'm hopeful that she will be able to become that again. I think that would be pretty awesome. And I've been looking for Carver, by the way. I've been looking for Carver, but unfortunately I don't seem to be able to find him for some reason. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that, but just going to take a look at some of their things and we will hopefully be able to equip them. Ah, okay, so Sir Felton, you are going to be getting this cuirass. It's going to be an absolutely amazing weapon for him. Unfortunately, I don't have any additional shields, which is a big problem, in my opinion. That is that is indeed a big problem, so I will have to be a little bit, uh, a little bit on the lookout for that, so to speak. And Martin, what do you have? You have 20 strength, so technically he could have used the other chest piece, but I'm going to give him my old chest piece right there. He could also use a horse so i might give him a horse there we go he's using a horse now as well and we're pretty good okay i think that's pretty nice okay so let's just level up these guys i have 389 coins i really need to get some ransoms going on here so i think what i'm going to do is just wait here for some time and we will oh hello there yes thank you very much sheepwood yes sheepwood is doing some good work for us right there and we are gaining 544 to the treasury my wages for my party are pretty exorbitant already which is really bad but hopefully my uh my weavery and dye works will be up and running relatively soon and as you can see the reason why i want to find that ransom broker wait did i even go in the tavern here to find a ransom broker i don't think i did already but it's going to be unlikely i'd say Probably unlikely. Is that... Oh, that's Alan. Worried farmer. Oh, he's going to give me a quest, isn't he? Okay, so Alan, can you join me? Oh, you're 700. Ah, oh, would have been really nice to have him. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so let's see. A band of brigands have taken refuge in our village. I will help you. I will help the village of Brandy Bottom from the marauding bandits. So, just before we go into the village, we're going to uh, spec into something... I have no idea what to spec into. I'm going to actually continue and double down on getting a huge amount of strength. And I know that may seem like a pretty dumb idea, but I'm going to do this for a very specific reason. I want to be the guy that is basically capable of fighting off huge amounts of enemies no matter what. So even if we happen to fail in some way and my tactics or strategy or whatever or my units just get caught in a really bad situation even if that happens then we'll be able to fall back on Elias's strength and we can literally put ourselves on his back and he can carry us to victory I mean that's that's what he's there for after all anyway I have a lance and you're going to be <laughs> ah yes the lance breaking mechanics yeah, there are spear breaking mechanics in this particular mod, which is, I, I, I suppose, uh, pretty realistic. I mean, I would say that, you know, maybe, you know, if a lance is going to hit a uh, very sturdy shield, I would say that that's probably going to maybe result in some damage taken to the lance. But uh, it's, it's kind of frustrating when that happens after the first hit. But I suppose it was a pretty pretty good hit at that so I'm, I, I suppose I'm pretty happy with it anyway we're just going to continue slaughtering these looters because they're just regular looters and hopefully we will then be able to uh, report to the farmer and basically say hey look at this you're fine your village is great no one died and uh, that's that's really good actually there are a bunch of armed villagers fighting with us which brings me to the next point we should probably try and save as many of them as possible I hope they won't die I really hope they won't die because I'm, I'm doing a good service for them right here and hopefully they will not see fit to run in and get themselves killed in some way so that would not be too good. I feel like I'm actually fighting farmers because these looters really do not have the best gear. Wow, we actually got 13 renown for this. I am really, really surprised. And I am actually going to be refusing these items because I think the honor is just a little bit more useful and 
at the moment, even though I need money, I still have a huge amount of ransoms to be done. And so uh, that's it. There we go. We've completed that quest. Fantastic. So now we're going to be heading onward to... I think we're actually going to be going and helping out at Storm's End. I think that could be really fun. So we're going to go over there. Well, we have a pretty interesting situation going on here. I'm actually kind of worried because I am being surrounded by a number of people here. And I'm hopeful that I have enough pathfinding to get away. Oh, look at that. Dragonstone has 800 units in here. This is insane. Okay, let's go in. If I can. Ooh, that was close. Okay, I feel like I was just about to get attacked by the entirety of the Stormlands. That would have been really bad. Anyway, I have no idea how many units are in here. We're going to join the next assault and see just how effective and how useful Elias can actually be. Maybe he's going to be not so useful. This is a siege tower. Oh dear. But we do have a battle advantage of 10. Many months later. It is about time that our forces decide to scale the siege tower and enter the battlements. Now, I am very skeptical about this because siege towers in general are never, never a good sign, especially when it comes to uh, this particular layout. This, this layout is something that I've not seen in quite some time, but when I did see it, it was harsh. Let's just say that. It was really harsh because what, what happens is the attacking force jumps down here, constantly gets shot by the archers, as you can see up there, and obviously we're going to have to kill people as we go, and hopefully we will be able to... Can I actually open the... No, I can't open the gates. Well... I suppose that's not really a big deal, but otherwise we have to get up here, uh, or we, we could just go through here. Yeah, I remember actually defending. Don't I, don't I remember defending this? I think I remember defending here, which was really strange because obviously all of the archers are over there, kind of like chilling in the, uh, in the archer nest, in the initial archer nest. And then you have these guys who are all the way safe in the keep. And they're basically fine, you know, there's no problem there whatsoever, but yeah, they are going to be kind of difficult for us to deal with, maybe? I don't know, but we outnumber the enemy pretty suitably, and now we have to go up a ladder while being shot. Whoa, okay, this is going to be harsh. Oh, I can't even go up these stairs? Oh, I was hopeful that I might be able to go up those stairs, but no such luck. So I will just have to do things a little bit sneaky. A little bit sneaky. Now, because obviously I don't have a ranged weapon, I'm going to have to uh, just make camp right here and uh, just wait for my forces to arrive. Now, obviously, because Dragonstone is not exactly known for being extremely good when it comes to... Well, <laughs> that's, that's the thing. I shouldn't really say that they're not good or anything like that, but I should just say that they generally tend to have quite a few halberdiers. And I know that in the past, whenever I've fought against Dragonstone, I've always had a, well, reasonably easy time. Because if I have any archers, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but if I have any, usually Dragonstone is the faction I want to be up against. If, if they're not an Essos faction. Because if they're an Essos faction, then obviously it's a whole different kettle of fish. But the point is, is that in general, Dragonstone will have a lot of halberdiers, and as a result, they won't have too many shields. And... Well, we all know what that means. Archers versus no shielded units, then, well, the archers are generally going to win. This is going to be very painful, though. As you can see, we are going into... Oh, dear. Yes. Hello, archers. You're going to shoot us where we stand, aren't you? Yes, you are. Oh, dear. Well, this is problematic. I don't really want to go up here, but now I'm forced to, otherwise I'm going to take some damage as I fall. I might actually just decide to jump off just because, because I really don't want to take such significant damage that I will end up dying, but we are losing so many units, literally just because we cannot get inside here, because most of our forces, as I've said before, they have halberdiers, you know, they have halberds, they have long range reaching weapons and it's very very difficult for them to actually use them in a siege so hopefully if i can get in here with my cleaver i will be able to hopefully carve a path through the enemy at least a little bit 
And then I will be able to... Oh, hello. No, 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 no. We're not going in there. We're not going in there. That's for sure. We are certainly not going up there. Not just yet, at least. We might be, but not just yet. Because that is... That is death. That is death up there. We are going to literally die instantly if those archers are allowed to shoot me anymore. Because even though I've got a pretty decent amount of shield, it's not going to be enough to protect me against, what, I don't know, 10 archers shooting at me at once? So we're going to have to be a bit careful here. And I'm just going to run through and kill these guys as best I can. I am being shot in the back as well, but hopefully my new armor is going to mean that I will take much less damage. This new armor is just, wow, protecting me like no one's business. So as you can see, because our forces are now being stupid, <laughs> and I'm not afraid to say that right here, because these guys are not ascending. They need to ascend. Can you please ascend? Ascend. There we go. Yes. Ascend and murder everything up here, please. Because they were actually stopping on the ladder and killing one guy. And it was taking them so long to kill that one guy that all these archers had, I don't even know how much time. To, to shoot us and so on and so forth. So oh, there's actually not even that many archers here. So I technically could just jump down, which I will do with a nice crowd surf right there. Okay, so how many units have we eliminated so far? Oh, okay, so we've actually not even lost that many. I actually thought that we, we were maybe having some problems, but it seems like we are doing okay now. I'm very surprised that we still have a good amount of HP. That's kind of also the reason that I wanted to make Elias this time into a very, very standard warrior archetype because making him into someone that can withstand damage and just generally participate in fights much more easily makes it easier for me to get experience with him. And it also makes it easier, of course, for us to affect the battle in many more ways because as it stands you know if I were to get myself eliminated with 44 HP or whatever it would be if I didn't spec into strength then I'd probably die pretty quickly unless I had obviously this armor but I did not know that I'd get this armor so early on so you know there is that because bear in mind there's not been that many days that have passed in the game just yet and we're already at this point where we are taking something obviously I'm not taking it myself but you know what I mean, we're participating in a pretty pretty big siege. So I'm kind of happy about that. Anyway, I'm actually going to try and crowd surf down here so I can get behind them. Oh, never mind. I'll just take eight damage. Good work, Elias. Uh, he, he's like, what, what, you, what, you, you're controlling me, you imbecile. Yes, I am an imbecile, Elias, don't worry. I have your, your best interests in mind. And uh, <laughs> uh, I thought it would be a fun idea to jump off the edge. He's not believing me. He's not believing me with that whatsoever. He just looked at me and rolled his eyes. You can you can tell, can't you? You can tell. Anyway, I think we're pretty good. I think there are a number of archers still remaining around here. I have to be very careful. As you can see, my shield is just about to be destroyed. Ooh, the fight continues, it says. Oh, okay, that's, that's interesting. So that must mean that we are gaining some reinforcements. That's pretty cool. And as you can see, there are archers actually taking cover in the, uh, in the, in the overgrowth here, which is actually pretty awesome for them to do so, because I actually did not see how many there actually were. So very good strategy from the Stormlands longbowmen here. And I might actually get myself killed right now, but hopefully not. Hopefully not, because my, my armor is just so incredibly good. Oh, hello. This guy's... Wow, that, that was a Stormland Sergeant. Yeah, you could tell, couldn't you? He had really good armor on as well. Anyway, I think we are pretty good, and I think we are done. Yes, we are. I'm actually really surprised that we only eliminated 150, but I assume there aren't that many units in here. Because, as I've said, some fiefs that you would consider to be towns are actually not towns and they are instead classified as castles and I think that is the in, that is indeed the case with Storm's End so that might be the reason why they have less in the garrison here and I'm actually kind of surprised that there is an enemy still alive here ah oh, there we go he's dead all right victory victory for the Dragonstone and that's, that's fantastic that's really really good so we're gonna gain 13 renown which is not that much admittedly, but we did gain, oh, look at that, 
Elias got 45 kills. He's only level 18. That's pretty good. Okay, and Dragonstone, as you can see, have now taken Storm's End from the Stormlands. We are surrounded on all sides. Let's wait here for some time and see what happens. The ensuing carnage is happening, and they have caught one or two vassals in a field battle. But that's okay, because I'm actually pretty happy to end this episode off here with that insane siege under our belt. Very nice indeed. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.